Hey guys, what I'd like to do today is talk about the three cameras I used during a recent trip to India. So myself, my wife, our son and a lot of family, we were all over in South India for a family wedding and we had an absolutely amazing time and then on the way back to the UK we stopped in Dubai for a couple of days. And these are the cameras which I had at my disposal during that trip. We've got the Sony A7C, which is a compact full frame camera from Sony. Then we've got the action camera, the GoPro Hero 11 Black. And then finally, the trusted smartphone, the Samsung Galaxy Fold 4. And, you know, like photographers, like filmmakers, YouTubers, before you go on a trip like this, you need to evaluate what you're going to take with you. And my ethos, my plan was to try and go as minimal as possible. So. I did have a selfie stick for the GoPro, but beyond that, I didn't have any tripods. And I had to make a decision as to what lens to take with this, with the, the Sony A7C. And at home, I have this lens. It's a 24 millimeter f1.4 lens. It's you know really good for vlogging and doing videos around the house, but it's not necessarily a big lens. There's a lot of bigger lenses out there, but when you're traveling, I really didn't want to go with a lens that big. So I opted for the kit lens. And the kit lens is, is really flexible, f4 to 5.6, 28mm to 60mm, and even extended, this is super, super small. And it's just a great uh, lightweight solution, you know, overall, because you've got the, the rotating screen, and you do have the option for external microphones as well. And I did take one over with me. That was something I did take over. I took over the Sony ECM, I think it's BM1. And this is one of the digital microphones which works directly with the Sony camera with certain models. So you don't need a battery. You don't have to set anything up. It's just all automatic. You can see I've got an auto audio level. So fantastic microphone, but sadly I did not get a chance to use it on a trip. And that is unfortunately what happened with the a7c in general so when you look at these three cameras it's quite obvious that the a7c here is the most capable it's the most expensive and it's the most you know it's, it's the most capable camera here the highest quality the best photos the best videos but due to circumstances i did not get a chance to use this in india which was a little bit of a shame but the practicality of using it it, it just wasn't there i was over with my wife, my son, my son is like just over one, he's a big lump, he's a big baby. So I was the one carrying him a lot. We were always carrying bags, carrying a baby, carrying bags. I, I just, it just wasn't practical to be walking around with a camera all day as well. Plus in many situations, we just weren't out sightseeing, we were doing family things. So I didn't get a chance to use this in India. I could have used it at the wedding, but I opted not to just so that I was free of carrying something else. So when we got to Dubai, I made a point of taking this out every day and I got some great photos and some great videos of this, uh, of the Burj Khalifa, of the hotel and different things. And it was great to spend some time with this camera. Maybe under different circumstances, this would have been the camera that I used the most. But I was under a unique situation where I was on daddy daycare duty all the time to look after our son because he's so heavy. Um, so yeah, I love this camera. The, the follow-up is coming out, the A7C uh, Mark II. We've also got the Sony A6700 this year, which is being compared to this a lot because this is so small, it's almost APS-C size. So an amazing camera, but unfortunately not one I got to use in India due to circumstances. So the cameras that I did use the most in India were these two, the GoPro Hero 11 Black and my smartphone. Now, the GoPro Hero 11 Black here is slightly behind the smartphone. And that's no surprise. I think nowadays, if you've got a, you know, a premium smartphone from the last couple of years, it's, it's great in most situations. You can get amazing videos during the daytime, amazing photos during the day and at night. And, you know, nighttime footage isn't too bad as well from a recording perspective. And the micro, microphones have been improved over the last few years as well. And I don't think we're at the point yet where a smartphone can completely replace action cameras uh, and full frame cameras and mirrorless cameras, you know, dedicated cameras. But we're kind of getting there. You know, I think we're at the point now where a lot of the photos and videos coming from smartphones are really, really impressive. And it does lean you towards being 
more lightweight because of that. That being said, I made a point of using the GoPro. So I'm I'm guilty of this, and I think a lot of people are guilty of this, of buying the latest action camera, thinking it's going to be the most amazing thing ever, and then not taking advantage of it, not going out and actually using it. And I've been guilty of that, you know, with previous generations where I've bought a GoPro, I've bought an action camera, and then I've not used it a lot. And when I went over this time, again, I had to think minimal. I've got a lot of attachments for the GoPro. I took over the media mod case, uh, which I've got with the light and the microphone. I took over extra batteries, which I didn't end up using just because, you know, I didn't really burn up the battery during the day. I got, you know, maybe an hour of footage and then that was enough and then I charged back at night. So I took over some accessories, but I, this is really how I used it. I had this in my pocket and I was, you know, taking it out of my pocket and recording footage in the car. I used it in the swimming pools and I used it in a lot of different situations. Now, the GoPro, the current generation, it's not perfect. It does overheat in certain situations. The menus are still a little bit fidgety, especially if you're in water. It just becomes a nightmare to use. And there's a lot of situations where it changes mode when you don't want it to. And oh, look at that, locked. Um, so yeah, it's, there's a lot of situations where the GoPro isn't as practical, not as user-friendly as you would like. But I would say that this trip has kind of rekindled my love with action cameras. It's just so quick to pull this out of your pocket and just start recording and just record amazing footage that you really can't get with a dedicated camera or with your smartphone. You know, just because you, you can throw this around, you can put this in situations you wouldn't trust yourself with, you know, with an expensive camera or with your smartphone, go in the water with it, no problem. And yeah, if I was going on holiday again, I would say the GoPro is the first camera that I would think of to take. It's just, there's just so many situations it's great to pull this out and you get some fun footage out there a lot of weird situations because you're kind of holding it up to your face like this and moving it around. But I'm glad I never took all the extra attachments. I was quite impressed with how little shakiness there was, just, you know, just holding the camera in your hand. It turned out to be a really good solution. But in the end, my smartphone, it, it was the phone, it was the camera, sorry, which I did use the most. I used this for most of the photos and videos that I took. It was just so easy to take out of my pocket you know, capture some footage. And, you know, you can see with the triple cameras in the back here, most modern smartphones, they've got these different lenses so that you can do widescreen, so you can do periscope. They're very versatile, especially from a software point of view as well, because they can use software to, to improve your photos at nighttime. You don't have to, you know, hook your photos to a computer and start editing. Everything's done on the fly. And it's just a very practical solution. And I'm just really looking forward to seeing how smartphone photography improves over the next few years because we might be in a situation where less and less people use a dedicated camera because you know these are so good in fact i think we're maybe there for a lot of people already where they just use their, their smartphones to do everything so these were the cameras that i took with me during our trip i did have a few other cameras which i considered i did consider other accessories i tried to stay minimal and i did but ultimately, I used my phone the most, and then I used the action camera, and then finally, the A7C, the best solution that I've got here, but I just didn't get a chance to use it as much as I hoped. So I had an amazing time over there. Next time I'm in India, I'm going to make a point of using a dedicated camera such as this to capture more footage because it's, it's so beautiful over there. But um, yes, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed listening to me rant about these different cameras. I thought it'd be an interesting topic because I think whenever we go on holiday, we're always thinking about what to take, you know, what accessories to take if you're going to record, especially. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear your, uh, your opinion on this. So please do leave a comment below and until next time, take care.